All right, so it's time for my very first cast of 2021, and what better way than to start the new year than with a game featuring the Sewer Mermaid himself. It's time for a game where in the bottom right corner of Death Aura, we're looking at none other than Beast Mode's main command center. Now, I know Beast Mode might not necessarily ring a bell, but it's one of the many nicknames of Florencio. In case you're unfamiliar, Florencio loves playing his own styles in StarCraft 2. He comes up with crazy build orders and strategies, and somehow, some way, more often than not, he actually makes them work against highly ranked opponents. In this particular game, I gotta veto this mapo. All right, in this particular game, playing here with the Red Protoss probes, we have none other than a Reach. Fudging Reapers can go anywhere? I'm going Reapers? I mean, it looks like he may have been planning on doing that. I mean, I'm going Mass Reapers. Watch it, sorry. Okay, I don't think Florencio was actually planning on going for Reapers, but now, well, I, yeah, all right. You kind of have to, right? Your opponent is kind of inviting you to go Reavers at this point. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's see how this goes. So, did I mention, by the way, that he's in Diamond League? Did I say that? I'm not entirely sure. What areas you say? So, this map, he's not entirely wrong. Death Aura does have a lot of those ramps to uh, to jump up on with those, uh, with those jetpack raiders. <laughs> Alrighty, then. Um, it actually said the time when this replay got played, and it was actually at 4 a.m., so I don't really know exactly what server this was on. I'm assuming it's the North American server, so maybe this is like two sleep-deprived Americans going at it at this point. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll see what ends up going down in this particular match. Alrighty, so, Reach um, cannot reach the, the high ground. He set up a rally point to check out his opponent's main base, but, uh, yep, he only just now realized that indeed there's a full wall-off, so he's not going to be able to get that much information. Already another... Uh, is that a second SCV? Yeah, another SCV did make its way towards... What is this? Like the, the one o'clock position? He decides to now go for what seems to be <laughs> a float on over with the barracks. Could have just produced it over there. But he queues up a couple of marines as well as a bunker inside of the opponent's natural expansion. At this point, Reach probably assumes that this is just going to be a standard fast expo or maybe like a cheeky 1-1-1 here from the Terran player on the other side of the map. He's seen one barracks only, so he should feel relatively confident, although he actually starts up a second gateway. Very strange build here by the Protoss player. Normally, you would go for your tech structure after this. Maybe he really is concerned uh, for Reaper shenanigans. Obviously, this could very well be, you know, since it was played at 4 a.m., this could very well be a game where... They just faced off against each other already. So maybe he realizes that this is, you know, someone who doesn't really play the game that ordinarily. But that being said, I still feel like going for a Stargate or a Twilight Council is probably your better choice. Oh, really? Oh, that sucks. Anyways, right now with the Nexus done, the structures over here in the natural will reveal themselves. There's going to be what seems to be a robo facility coming up right now. But I mean, what are you going to do with the double gateway? Uh, you can't really even afford producing out of both of them at once. I mean, he, he's gonna do it right now, but it's, yeah, it's not a very optimal build, and already that natural is gonna be in a world of trouble. In the meantime, actually, ooh, wow, it actually was spotted. <laughs> I've got a feeling they may have already played against each other just now. So the CC at the one o'clock position actually does not get spotted by a probe, so this is the fastest... You know, scout of a, uh, a proxy command center that I've ever actually seen. We don't really, we don't really see proxy CCs in this matchup ever. And I've got a feeling they may have faced off against each other once or twice before this. Would not be surprised at all. Anyways, I don't think you need double shield battery in the main base. I think what you really need at this point is an immortal if you're going to be going for the robo facility. But the natural expansion at this point is gone. In the meantime, inside of the main base of Mr. Florencio, we see the Ghost Academy coming up after the NG Bay. So I think that the Engineering Bay actually is primarily here to get a, um, a Planetary Fortress going? I mean, that seems to be... Yeah, see? He never makes Orbital Commands. In the previous game featuring Florencio, I remember that I was shouting at him to get himself the Orbital Commands, because it's kind of a Silver League mistake not to get those Orbitals right away, but... Thinking about it a little bit more, I'm pretty sure that Florencio doesn't actually make orbital commands. He pretty much always goes <laughs> for the dirty strats where you go for, uh, you know, the planetaries. Now, what exactly are you going to do about this expo over here, though? So the probe actually gets spotted. I don't know if Florencio realized that this expansion was also scouted. If he did, he probably would have actually started up the planetary over here first, rather than inside of the main base. 
Either way, Reach is gonna continue macroing up right now on the one base that he's got. Um, Immortals are pretty good at, ba uh, at breaking through structures, right? So if you get a bunch of these guys out, you can certainly plow your way even through a planetary fortress. So we'll see how this ends up being played out. There's a couple Marines over here still inside of the bunkers. I feel like they can get killed very, very easily with some uh, some nice micro. If you could get a prism right now, that would be neat, but I don't really know exactly how confident he feels in his juggling. Anyways, we'll have to see what comes out of this Ghost Academy. So the first thing that you see right over here on the production tab is indeed going to be the cloaking field. All right. Did he just lose an immortal? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I was going to I was gonna say, like, if he just lost an immortal right there to a couple marines, that would be really sad. For some reason, the immortal <laughs> over here is standing inside of the main base. I guess he's kind of, like, camouflaged, okay? If you're, if you're zoomed in a little bit, you can kind of see the camouflage right there on the... There you go. He finally realized it. This is when the O-Army hotkey would actually be better, but... Anyways, he's going to be making his way on over towards the planetary right now. Um, uh, I don't know, bro. You gotta split up those units a little bit because planetaries do deal splash damage. If Lorenzo target fires down the immortals, I think he should be able to hold on just fine. Nice little bit of micro right there, though, on the planetary. Loads up the SCVs inside of the structure. You gotta target fire, though. I don't think he's targeting. Nah, he's not targeting. He's just manually... Uh, or, or rather, uh, Reach right now is manually targeting the SCVs at this point, and I think that does mean, since both of the Immortals still live, that the planetary will... S Ooh! Actually, I think it goes down, right? It should go... Oh my god! Uh... <laughs> there you go. Alright, it did go down. Pretty sure, though, with some good target firing there. Florencio probably could have hold on, or could have held on to that, uh, to that expansion. What Immortal, though, lives to tell the tale. He's going to return on home with six kills to his name. In the meantime, though, there was a... Uh, is that that very first proxy barracks? I think it may have just been. His barracks floated on over here, built a tech lab, and then he's now producing ghosts, as well as a tactical nuke on the other side of the map, to, I guess, continue playing this game with some more shenanigans. At this point, though, I'm really liking the position here for the Protos. I mean, he's got, indeed, that robotic facility, I don't think he's got any detection yet at this point, but I mean, you can chrono out one of these uh, one of these observers relatively easily. So this should be playable right now, actually, for the Protoss, quite quite nicely, yeah. Only just now is when we see additional command centers coming up, so Florencio at this point adds on two more CCs, but those are gonna take a while before they will actually be done. Second Ghost Academy comes up too. Alrighty. Yeah, so you can see here that this is clearly like... You know, not, not like low-league StarCraft anymore, because the spending here of the Protoss is actually good. He hasn't actually hit a supply block yet, he might be a little bit too aggressive on the pylons as a matter of fact, but... I mean, he's done a good job so far playing this game. I mean, not perfect, but... His macro is on point. Does he see the little shimmer right now? <sighs> you can see the little shimmer here if you're paying very close attention. It was moving earlier. I don't think he noticed. Nah, I don't think he did. So here we go, Tactical Nuke, coming up. Where's he gonna go? Inside of the main base? Ooh, that's a little bit ambitious. Alrighty. So that one will be going straight into the main base. Protoss is gonna continue marching, it seems. Like, he doesn't have detection at this point. It's still coming up, but there we go. He does pay attention inside of the main. First nuke will land, and actually a decent amount of probes end up going down here as well. And I see... Or I, I say first nuke primarily because he's queuing up more of them right now on the other side too. In the meantime though... The majority of the Protoss army has made their way across the map. There's enough siege tanks on the high ground to easily defend that main base, but if you want to take the natural, you're going to have to move those tanks around as well. Another ghost is walking up towards the main right now too. The main of the Protoss, that is. Shield battery goes down at the front. There's a forge coming up as well. Where's that observer at? Um, it's, it's, okay, it's, yeah, okay, it's right over here. It's camouflaged as well. Wait, 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 hold up. Okay, no, I thought for a second that he ended up uh, walking all of those units into the high ground there of the Terran player, but that's not quite gonna happen. So the nuke will, I think, land over here on the low ground, but the probes were pulled back towards the main base this time around. Didn't really get a whole lot of value out of it. Although, that, be sa uh, that being said, I mean, ghosts aren't, like, super expensive, right? And nukes aren't that pricey either. It's 100 minerals, 100 gas for every nuke. And now that there's an observer out, I think that this will be... Oh my god, no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this will be held relatively easily. Thought for a second that those stalkers weren't gonna step forward and the nuke would still land, but... Alrighty. So what exactly are you gonna do right now if you're Florencio? He's pretty much always got a next step in his plan. 
One thing that I guess he uh, he's getting out of this is that uh, the Protoss player is very busy defending all of this shenanigans, so he can actually get the planetary and the expansion up, which is neat. SCVs will be transferred towards the low ground as well, but now you've got a couple ghosts and a couple nukes just sort of sitting there. Really like what the Protoss player is doing here. Just go towards the low ground, grab yourself a third base. Honestly, I've been critiquing Protoss quite a bit uh, recently, especially for just, you know, sitting back a lot and not really doing a, a whole lot of things in, in most of the matchups. But I actually think that's a pretty good strategy in this particular game. Just max out Archon, Immortal, Zealot, Storm, something along those lines, and just, you know, get moving. He's got that economical advantage right now. He doesn't really need to play super aggressively here. Now, instead, he decides to go for a Stargate. Also a Robo Bay at this point, so I'm... Hmm, yeah. Looks like he's a little conflicted as to what kind of strategy he actually wants to be going for. He does have two Observers right now and one Control Group, it looks like, together with the Prism, so that's a little bit shaky as well. If he ends up moving everything across the map, that Ghost, once again, can move in towards the Natural. Now, he is going to go for a Photon Cannon or two in the Natural as well, so that's neat. Photon Cannons, of course, are also Detectors. I think he's actually just looking around to see if he can maybe catch one of those Ghosts. Uh, when it's moving up. Anyways, here we go. A nuke will be coming up on the third Nexus. I mean, <laughs> it's gonna take a lot of nukes to deal with that. Oh, no, 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 no. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why would you recall? Why, why are you for... My God, that is the most ballsy recall I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> do you think he actually thought that was a good idea? Or do you think he just YOLO'd and just figured I was... Oh, my god. Well, if you're gonna do that again, um, you'll probably lose everything. Like, that was exceptionally risky. What is the advantage there as well? I mean, that was rather slow too, right? He didn't even recall the observers there, so... Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna go with sleep-deprived Americans playing a game at 4 in the morning. I, I, think, I think that's what I'm going with here. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually insane. Why would you ever do that? Anyways, two additional nukes are being researched. Even though there's a perfectly fine third base to take over here or over here, apparently it's been acquired on the, uh, what is this, like the three o'clock position? This is actually one of the things that seems to, uh, once again, another nuke actually comes up. Double nukes at this point. So they'll be, uh, flying on over towards the other side of the screen. But one thing that's very common in the games that Florencio plays is that, um... Oh. Well, that one will end. Nicely done. Is that he always grabs expansions in weird locations on the map. And I think one of the reasons why he can oftentimes end up winning is not necessarily because of the crazy strategies, but because the opponents aren't, you know, aren't aware of the amount of economy that he's actually got, right? If, if the Protoss at this point assumes, okay, Terran is on two bases, the way that he's playing is acceptable, right? But the fact of the matter is that there's actually a third base over here on the right side of the map that he doesn't know of, and that makes his whole game completely different because it means that the Terran can grab much bigger army here as time goes on. Protoss also actually has lost a lot of probes. Yeah, 34 workers right now in total, mostly because of those nukes. This one right now has got 18 kills to his name. Absolute madman. Look at that. He looks like a Power Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Two more nukes coming up. Second Stargate coming up as well. The uh, Fleet Beacon has already finished up, and with that, a couple of Tempest too. so... I like this actually here from Reach quite a bit. It's a bit of a reach, but it'll get there. Haha! <laughs> sorry, sorry. I apologize. Well, there's a couple observers over here, so assuming the Protoss player is not completely blind... Oh my... You can just literally see the dot on the minimap. Another nuke comes up right now over at the fourth base. Oh my god, no! No, no, no! No, no, kill it! Are you for real? Really? You literally had a dot on the minimap showing you where the... Alright. <laughs> this is Diamond League, alright. There's some aspects of this Protoss game, or this Protoss' gameplay, rather, that are really good. Like his macro and his spending in general has been solid. The fact that he doesn't use the old army hotkey anymore is also very good. I like his game sense in general, but then there's some moves where you're just second-guessing yourself, right? It just uh, seems so obvious when you're the observer of the game, but... Yeah, when you're actually playing these kind of matches, it does become a little bit more complicated. Now, 
Ooh. <laughs> I did not look at the Terran's natural here in a little while. Um, he can see all those little potholes. Yeah, I think they're spotted right now, but it doesn't matter. Oh my god, Florencio just walks up. Burrows underneath, and there you go. I think most of these will indeed be able to explode. Gotta get out of there, though. <laughs> what a build. What a strategy. The mind surprise. <laughs> With the amount of siege tanks right now inside of the main base, though, yeah, you can definitely make a transition towards something else. Not a nuke right now is flying towards the other side of the map. This one will be going towards the Protoss' as a low ground. There's an observer right above this, but the stalkers walk by it because he's not attack moving. Fourth base now also in a little bit of trouble. I think I think what this Protoss player is doing actually is that he's maneuvering his army around pretty decently. But he's not a tech moving, so he's move commanding all the time. There are uses where you want to go for move commanding instead, so you just right click your units around the map. But more often than not, you want to go for this, indeed, where you go for an attack move. Meaning that units, if they encounter another unit from your opponent, will automatically attack them. And we've seen like a couple of units just derping around the map a couple times already at this point. Anyhow, the Protoss though, continuously grabs himself a stronger and stronger army. As we all know, the Protoss Death Ball is not to be underestimated. Although at this point it looks like we're gonna have Skytols going uh, going up against Mass Thor, which... <laughs> is not quite a common strategy. Already going into the additional Flyer Attack upgrades as well, which is really neat. Carriers in particular uh, benefit from those upgrades a lot, because every single Interceptor ship uh, gets additional attacks. Which is awesome. I mean... I don't know if Florencio even realizes that there's a, a couple of observers in surveillance mode over here right now. I think he sees it at this point, yeah. This is a strange location for a tactical nuke. Once again, we go for the one-two punch. This nuke over here is mostly just a distraction, at, uh, I think just to kill that observer and the pylon. And at the same time, I mean, this one just ran out of energy though, but the Protoss has got zero minimap awareness, so I'm pretty sure, yeah. Even though he can see the little blue dot right now on the minimap, there you go. He still is a little bit slow when it comes to his reaction time. This time around though, at the very least, the probes will live. Ghost right now, by the way. James Bond himself has got 27 kills to his name. So this is a theme in all of the Florencio games. People never seem to uh, seem to assume that Protoss or, or sorry that Terrans will take another base in a weird location, right? So he assumes right now that the third command center is only just now floating on over. And if you assume at this point that the Terran player is on two bases, the moves that this Protoss is is making aren't aren't even bad. Oh my God! Well, this is bad though. <laughs> I was complimenting you, Mr. Protoss. What are you doing right now? Why are you giving away all your units? Hello! What the? Why is he doing this? I don't get it! Thors are actually surprisingly good when it comes to their uh, high impact mode, man. They deal so much damage. Oh my god, really? Did you just... Apparently he did. In the meantime, on the other side of the map... We do see another tactical nuke coming up. There are a couple of uh, photon cannons over here, and the uh, the ghost has been detected, but apparently the Protoss doesn't really care. <laughs> yeah, this guy has got zero minimap awareness. It's actually a little sad, man. He, he literally just has to pay attention to the minimap a little bit more. He's completely falling apart right now, though, with the amount of technical nukes that are going across the map. Oh, no. He does see them at this point, but look at the- Oh, no, 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 oh, He's putting the probes in the gas! He's putting the probes in the gas! The nuke is right there, dude! Oh, no. That's... <clears throat> James Bond 2.0. 008. Um... <laughs> he's, he's getting across the map. And I guess he's been tasked with nuking down the Nexus. Reach has got a lot of uh, idle workers over here. <laughs> yep. I mean, Ghost actually, they, uh, they're two short workers. They don't actually mess around. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. The laser giraffe eventually sees that something is not quite right. 
as the ghost runs out of energy. And uh, the cloaking field also uh, ends up uh, ending. But you can see that this Protoss has got some really good game sense, but then some of it is just an absolute disaster. There you go. You know one problem, actually? No, no, no. Go! Hey! No, no, no! Colossus! Ay, ay, ay. Um, I thought for a second he was going to sacrifice himself. One thing that I actually was doing wrong, all the way up to Grandmaster League, right, is that I liked playing with the, uh, the red colors myself. And nukes aren't that common, right? However, if you play with the red colors, you're also looking for a red dot on your own structures. So, <laughs> playing with red is, is one of the... <laughs> one of the no-gos in StarCraft 2. Like, you can change your in-game color with the hotkey Alt plus F. So, if you ever find yourself in a situation like that, um, yeah, just hit Alt plus F on the keyboard and, you know, the, the red dot will still be red, but your own colors will change. It's uh, a neat little trick if you're ever going up against nukes and you find yourself playing with red. But I wonder if that's what's going on right now as well for the protos here. Because especially in TVP, I mean, you never really see nukes. My god, look at these fours though, going to town. These guys do not mess around. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alrighty. These are like walking planetary fortresses right now. There you go. They have actually a surprising amount of range as well, when it comes to, like, ground to ground. They don't mess around, look at that. They just killed that base really easily. Doesn't even have any upgrades on them. Wow. Um, I think if you're ever gonna go up against this kind of stuff, right? If you're ever going up against Terran Mech, your last thought should be flying units. Literally, Archon Immortal Zealot, man. Archon Immortal Zealot will deal with these units very nicely, especially Immortals. Immortals are fantastic when it comes to dealing with mechanical units because they deal bonus damage to armored. And, well, pretty much all of these units are. 009, moving in. Is this one going to be able to get any damage in? I mean, at this point, Protoss is uh, starting to bleed out. There's not a nuke flying towards the other side of the map. Oh, no. Okay, the observers have their observer speed upgrade as well, but is he gonna be able to... Uh, yeah. Oh my god, well, that's not a very stealthy way to die. Anyways, at this point, I mean, I've got a feeling that there is way too much for Florencio. As you can see, he's been running out of gas here because the Terran mech army is extremely expensive. He's got a ton of minerals in the bank right now. I really like the way, though, that Florencio opens up in these type of games, right? I don't know about this transition necessarily. Like, it's a lot of fun to watch, don't get me wrong. But imagine if he opens up the same way that he did right now and then just transitions towards, say, just Marines, right? Just Marine Marauder Medivac. I feel like he could come stimming up this ramp with 200 supply, like, seven minutes before this army can. And that would be pretty much unstoppable, right? Like, basically, the idea behind that is that even though it's technically counterable for the Protoss, the Protoss here is spending the entire game putting out fires. And uh, if they're busy putting out <laughs> the one Zealot that's been tasked... Oh, no. Poor Zealot, man. They've been tasked with killing the ghost. But imagine, imagine right? Like, if, if you're putting out fires the entire game longer, you can never really stabilize. You, uh, you embrace the chaos here if you're Florencio. You open up with something completely out of the ordinary, and then you transition watch something a little more standard. Either that, or you expand a little bit quicker and grab the additional gases. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed watching today's YouTube video. If you did and you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I generally speaking upload Monday through Saturday, uh, so I hope to see you once again tomorrow for another YouTube video. If you really enjoyed the content, check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash locotv. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.